the richness of the knowledge base of occupational therapy, its broadness, its complexity, and yet its scientific grounding that gives a practitioner the real power to connect and understand a client in their life, in their social world, in their work world, in every aspect of their life. We're now not just working with individuals with disabilities and not just working on their disabilities. We're working on helping people to maintain healthy, active lifestyles. You learn how to look at a person as a person and not as a diagnosis. And I think we, we steer away from the medical model in a sense from that perspective because we, we do look at the bigger picture. Knowing how much to do and when to do it and when to make the intervention and when to back off the intervention and offering meaningful activities, not simply meaningless physical rote exercises is absolutely crucial to being a top-notch occupational therapist. People that come into the field like to think about life in a creative way, but we also find that a lot of people that come are also scientists, and that they think about things in depth, and they have a, a capacity to integrate that creative side with the scientific side. I always consider myself practicing as an artist. And I just, now I practice art with people. You have to be creative if you're going to be working with clients and what they do every day. You never know who you're going to get and what they're going to be interested in and how you're going to, what you're going to need to do to motivate them. I just love our students. We have the most amazing students. We just really do. They are so passionate. They're so interesting. They come from all over the country. They come from little rural town in Wyoming to the big city to international students. And they have such passion. They're so dedicated. They come to USC because they want this premier experience. And they come ready to go. It's so interesting and fascinating. And it always surprises me, and I shouldn't be surprised anymore, of how the students change so much in one year and how they, in that program they become leaders in their profession. The students who come into occupational therapy are um, greatly uh, invested in helping people. Not quite sure how to do that or what the venue is for that, but uh, they're very consistent in that they, they feel that they have a purpose and a mission. And, that, um, and then I think our job as faculty is to is to help them, to guide them, mentor them in finding the way to, to act out that purpose. You're tapping into a dream they have or you're tapping into something they don't know yet. And when you tap into that, um, you offer them an opportunity or you offer them a vision for the future. One of the strengths of the faculty is that in every discipline that we talk about, medical anthropology and cultural anthropology, we have neuroscience, we have leading faculty in each of those areas. They're on top of their game, they're doing cutting edge research, and they're teaching. Working with the faculty here has just been fantastic. We stay, we, haven't, we don't have much turnover. People stay here, and so we have a good team. We're somewhat unique in that most of our faculty practice in some way. And that, uh, that makes a difference. And I think then we have, we have real circumstances to talk to the students about. We really try to make a point in the classroom to bring in those clinical stories, to talk about the research that's going on here, the practice at the hospital, in our faculty practice. So lots of opportunities to integrate that. There are three elements of concentration, research, education, and practice. And in every one of those, we have to be outstanding. We do not value one more than the other. We do not privilege one over the other. We invest in all of them. We try to have the students understand that the research is part of everyday practice and that we need to apply as much as possible what is being studied now. This is the place where occupational science, which is the science that legitimizes our practice, came to be. And our entire curriculum is drenched in occupational science. You have people here that are practicing cutting edge and researching cutting edge in almost every kind of facet of occupational therapy. And it makes it a very unique kind of setting. Many of the leaders in occupational therapy came out of this program here at USC and continue to come out of this program here at USC. 
USC is a first-rate university, the best university I've ever taught at, the most academically rigorous. It's in a world-class city. Um, it has everything going for it that a student could possibly help for. Enrichment inside the classroom and outside the classroom as well. I think the future of occupational therapy is taking what we know, the science that we know and the proven results, into the mainstream into a wider audience. I think occupational therapy can benefit anyone. If you're considering this as a career, it's pretty much recession proof because occupational therapy jobs are very plentiful and for good, good reason. Occupational therapy has always kind of been ahead of its time. So we've always been interested in health and well-being and it's taken a while for the healthcare community to catch up with that. There are so many ways that people can apply the ideas and the concepts about how to live a, a satisfying, meaningful life in so many different environments, not just in the healthcare or the educational environments, but really out in any community um, setting that you can imagine. It feels really good when you've, when you've been doing something for years about which you know in your heart has been for the good of humanity.